Restaurante Bottles, uno de los restaurantes más conocidos para los amantes de vino en Puerto Rico, en, localizado en el área de Guaynabo. De hecho, estamos en el nuevo Bottles. Quiero, antes de empezar la entrevista con nuestro invitado de hoy, agradecer a, a Richard, agradecer a Fernando Arteaga, agradecer a Carlitos Montalvo y todos los buenos amigos que siempre nos dan la mano en nuestro proyecto. Y hoy tenemos a un invitado de lujo, tenemos a una persona que no solamente tiene el título de Master Sommelier, sino que también es un Certified Wine Educator. Y ustedes se preguntarán cuántos de ellos hay. Solamente 15, 15 personas. Y si se quieren sorprender más, el nombre de este caballero es Michael Jordan. Pero si ustedes van a Google y buscan Michael Jordan, sale algo del basquetbolista, pero sale información también de nuestro invitado. Ahora vamos a, a cambiar inglés para, para llevar a cabo la entrevista. So, Michael. Great, great to have you here. Thanks Thank for the opportunity. You. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm a, it's my honor to be here with you. So, so uh, before we get into the wines, you know, one by one, tell us about you. How'd you get involved with the uh, with the wine business? Thank you. Well, I grew up in the restaurant business, uh, and my father owned a restaurant in Los Angeles, California, called Mateo's Italian okay. Restaurant, and it's been there for over 50 years. I grew up in that business from the time I was a little boy as a dishwasher and making ravioli and lasagna, learning how to cook right. in, in his kitchen. Eventually, running the restaurants, and eventually I had to also, you know, kind of leave the family restaurant business to try to branch out and learn more and grow and experience in the food and, food and beverage industry, in the hospitality industry. Okay. But I saw my father as a great host and uh, taking care of a lot of celebrity clientele and making them really happy, uh, serving them and cooking for them. And so I, I, I realized early on that's what I wanted to do. So you were exposed to the to the wine world from a very early age then? Yeah, and I came through through the kitchen door okay. to the oh, world of wine. Okay. I, I grew up in my family's restaurant as a, a cook and then eventually chef and then I wanted to begin to expand more from working in the kitchen as a chef to running the entire restaurant and managing the wine program and managing the dining room as well. Okay. So I was able to uh, transition from chef. Well, my father made me work every job in the restaurant. So I went from executive chef to busser, bus okay. boy. Okay. So yeah. I can learn how the dining room works and then a back waiter and then a front so you've seen the most the monster from inside and out every job that's great and i'm that's glad amazing. they they pushed me to work that way and learn the entire industry uh from doing those jobs so then i was able to actually once i was the general manager of the restaurant i was really responsible for all of the buying of the wine and, and managing the wine list and i got a great opportunity to manage a really world-class wine list back in the day okay and we're talking uh to uh specific going to a, a, a period of time when was this 10 years ago five years ago 45 years 45 ago. years ago i know i don't look that old but you know, okay. it's okay uh, 45 years some ago, babies drink milk others others drink wine right yeah you know and uh, i was i instead of having a high chair i had a bar stool <laughs> yeah so, so and, i grew up in the restaurant business and Then uh, I left the family restaurants to work for Four Seasons Hotels, working fine five-star restaurants for them. Uh, eventually, my wife and I opened our own restaurant. I was the chef, and she ran the front. And then we sold that, and I got a great job with the Walt Disney Company. Oh, nice. I worked for 10 years with Disney. And for several of those years, I was in charge of the entire wine program. So you're the responsible guy for getting Mickey drunk. Uh, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'm I just can't, teasing you. I can't take that responsibility. <laughs> I'm just but my, my know, baby loves Mickey Mouse. You know, absolutely. yeah. So, and I have a funny story to follow with that. But uh, at Disney, I was able to open a world-class restaurant for them with them, called the Napa Rose, and that sprang a tremendous wine education program. We're talking about the Disney in California or the California? Florida? California. Okay. So then, after opening the Napa Rose in California at Disneyland Resort. We created a wine education program for Disney that was introducing the court of master sommelier uh -huh. to the to the restaurant business and getting a lot of people through their examinations at the court of master sommelier. So after certifying about a thousand people with examination for the court, we were trying to improve the food and beverage industry as a whole. So I really got a lot of experience with wine and I got introduced to the court of Master Sommelier. That's great. Now I had already been in the business for over 35 years 
working in restaurants and wine, buying wine, selling wine, writing wine lists, and doing all those things. But I was had a, I was excited to have an opportunity to take the examinations leading up to, and as a big goal, I wanted to get the sommelier master diploma. Okay. So I got the MS, and I had also passed the diploma examination from certified wine educators, yeah. Society of Wine Educator, and so now. I'm lucky. Is this after you retire from the Bulls? Yeah. <laughs> after my knee, after my knee injury. Yeah. Let's go. Let's get into the. Uh, let's get into the company, the uh, Jackson Family Fine Wines. Let's talk about the three wines that we have today. Obviously, we're a little short on time because you have a big event with around a hundred people uh, here in uh, in Bottles, a great restaurant. So, uh, we're, let's go to the uh, to the first one. Tell us about this Wild Rich Pinot Noir. So, Wild Rich Pinot Noir is. Uh, a, a relatively new winery for the Jackson family. Jackson family owns 40 different wineries all over the world. Of course, it all started with the Kendall Jackson program that Jess Jackson created, and and those those wine helped them to become successful and purchase more vineyard lands, create other new wineries. Yeah, and really, uh, I'm very excited about the Wild Ridge Winery out on the Sonoma Coast, uh, where. We call it the Cold Coast. Okay. It's in Sonoma County in Russian River Valley and right on the coast where it's very, very cold, which is a very good place to grow Pinot Noir grapes. It is what we call farming on the edge. Okay. High, high risk, high reward farming. So if you can get that fruit ripe, you're going to have the most amazing fruit you can possibly get. But it's high risk because it's a very, it's a very difficult site for farming these grapes. But Pinot Noir really likes a cold place where it can develop acidity at nighttime and ripen the tannin and sugar in the daytime. This is the perfect spot. What I like about this wine is that it has tension, it has clarity of fruit, it has spice, it has a little notes of clove, little notes of of something that's yes. very tangy, a little tangy. Yeah, well, that, that's the fruit, that's the fruit. So you got black cherries, you have cola, you have uh, uh, forest floor, the mossy green uh, ferns and, and forest floor moss. You have, like you said, clove and great acidity. I love the acidity because, too, to because pair with food. The longer it takes for the grapes to ripen, the more intensity, the more flavor we're gonna have in the wine. Right. The longer the grape is taking, the more flavor so a long cool dry ripening season as i said at nighttime in the cold the acidity is made and in the daytime we ripen the tannin and the sugar and you have to have both acid and sugar at a certain level to make a wine that's balanced right with this beautiful perfume of dry rose petals yeah there's rose you know petal and, there, and yeah. the beautiful fruit and the purity of, of pinot noir but the great acidity that will allow this wine when it starts to age a couple of years start to get rounder the fruit will still be bright and alive and the acidity of the freshness will allow this wine to live oh man a minimum 10 years minimum. moving moving on to the la jota vineyard la jota is on top of howell mountain in napa valley we're talking about a vineyard that's around oh about eight, 1,800 feet on top of Howell Mountain. And Howell Mountain is one of the mountains around Napa Valley, but it has a very specific style of fruit that comes from that mountain because it's misty, it's cold, high in the elevation. You get a lot of red fruit, like cranberry, along with the big black fruit flavors of Blackberry and cassis. Yeah, the cassis. I can tell the cassis. Yeah, you normally find cassis in Cabernet Sauvignon. And it's it's, it's 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 supposed to be restrained and Bordeaux like. Right. So it's not this massive whack of fruit. You get uh, this nose that screams elegance, right? Well, that's I love the way you describe our wine. But yes, because you're in the mountain. It's more restrained, tiny berries, it's not on the valley floor, it's not so hot where these grapes were grown, they're just perfectly ripe, they're not overripe, and so you're making a more elegant style of, it's of total, Bordeaux it's wine. It's totally left, left bank Napa, left bank meets Napa, 
I, I would say that's a good description. Like a Napa guy goes to France and falls in love with a French woman, and then they have a child, right? Something like this. You know, you get red fruit and black fruit, like cranberry, licorice, yeah. and then your blackberry and your cassis. It's not all black, blue fruits, no. normally jam. No. It's not that. We have another wine we're going to talk about that has all that. And that's the that, third one? That has all that, and that's the Mount Brave. And we're talking about... Before moving to the third one, tell okay. us what will you pair this with? If you want to open this bottle, then what you get for dinner? What, 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 do you, uh, what do you look for in a dish to complement this wine? Well, the beauty of a wine like this that has so many different layers of fruit with red and black fruit, and it's a little more elegant in its style comparatively, instead of a big monster Cabernet Sauvignon, I think you can even take things that uh, normally you would pair with Merlot, mm -hmm. all right? So definitely a lamb chop, some pork roast, lamb roast, uh, cassoulet, duck could even work with this wine, whereas normally duck wants Pinot or Merlot. Exactly, exactly. Okay, because it's rich and fatty, but this wine has that red fruit flavor that will pair with those dishes very well. Now, when, when we move to Mount Brave, the third one. We're moving to a different mountain top in Napa Valley, okay. and that is Mount Veeder. And we're going about wow, 1,700 this feet. Is, this is the guy that uh, doesn't walk into a room; he stampedes into a room, right? It's like a giant, massive bull of a wine here. I gotta say that it's a very big, intense wine. Wow, there's the, the but the, when you taste the graphite, it, the minerality here, the what? Dark complexity, uh, stone layers and layers of fruit and stone and graphite and earth and cigar leaf, tobacco leaf, tobacco leaf. olives. You can and bite all the you spices. Can bite. It's like biting onto fruit. Well, you know it's pretty young. It's in 2010, and but try and drink, taste. It's actually very drinkable for such a big complex wine. You can actually drink it now. You don't have to wait 10 years for it to age. Although, it feels the person that does wait five, six, or eight years for this to age will be rewarded with a lot of additional flavors and aromas that will develop over time. It's, it's creamy, it feels creamy on the mouth. And uh, it's it's obviously, like creamy. it's very well integrated, the, uh, the oak and the fruit, and uh, obviously you can definitely uh, tell that this is a wine that can rival any of those uh, cold wines from Napa. And uh, this is, it's different in that this one right here is a little bit more elegant. This, not that this isn't elegant, but this is well, more flamboyant. Right? That's super. Let's face it, when we're talking about Cabernet Sauvignon, one of the words that we don't use very often is elegant. Right. right? Yeah, it's true. So when you find one that does have that finesse and red and black fruit, it's a very unique style of Cabernet Sauvignon. That's why La Jota has been so famous for so many years, and especially in restaurants. Restaurant tours and sommeliers will love this wine because it's not just black and blue fruit. It has much more complexity and pairability, like you were saying, what it will pair with. Now, when we go to a big style black and blue fruit Cabernet Sauvignon from Mount Beater, it has a very specific profile that's more classical to a Napa Valley style Cabernet Sauvignon. This, this right here is the Beauty Queen. This is the Ballerina. This is the Russell. Yeah, I would say small, medium, and large. Yeah, That's Very a skinny wine, skinny wine. Okay, this is your mid wine. You know, it can handle the mist wine. That's big wine. This guy's crying out for a steak, steak. steak Florentine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or big, big. Uh, tenderloin uh, chops, like it's so big it can stand to a piece of arm. Yeah, right, right, right like uh, this is flat Flintstone wine. No, this wine here actually is going to go so well with with uh, a, a, a ribeye steak, yeah. something with a little fat content, yeah. grilled. All right, or or if you want to go also buco. Also, but wine, but is getting ner rich, wine is getting nervous. Well, see, he's, why not? He's thirsty. He's thirsty, and uh, he doesn't. He doesn't like to pay. That's a problem with him. He likes to uh, get invited all the time. That's but we have wine for wine. We yeah, got. We, we got. We got wine. Yeah, we will. We'll give you some. It's my little buddy. <laughs> so, Michael, uh, I know that you are. Uh, 
you were in Puerto Rico 22 years ago, back in the, the 80s, and now you're here again. We hope that uh, you come more often, that uh, we get to see you at least once a year. And obviously, it's, it's a privilege for us to uh, have a sit down with you. Thank it's you. been a little crowded here. This is your. It's your, exciting. Look at all these people coming yeah, in, man. This, wow. is, this is your crowd, so uh, I'm not going to take any more time from you. I really appreciate the time, and uh, yeah. I wish you nothing but the best with Thank uh, you. Your, your work at Jackson. I will be back in Puerto Rico at least twice a year, uh, and I'm not going to wait another 10 years to come back here. I salute you and thank, thank you for you. having me as a guest. Thank you so much. Salud. Gracias, amigo. Nos vemos. Gracias.